Crack Nation, it is game week, baby. Whoop, whoop. It is time, baby. It is here. We are ready. Let's go, y'all. It is finally here. NC State versus UConn here in less than three days. That is crazy to think about, y'all. That is so less excited. than 72 hours, man. It is phenomenal, to say the least. But uh, with that being said, y'all, uh, just go ahead and get right to it. This is a special show here. Is this going to be a call-in show? So just a couple of steps. If you want to join the show and discuss, uh, give us your quick thoughts on the upcoming season, the season opener, whatever that may be. Uh, all you have to do is just click the link in the uh, comment box right there at the top and then turn off your video uh, and then just wait your turn. Uh, it only allows a certain amount of people at a time uh, in the wait area. So uh, if, it, if, it, if you don't get in, that just means that we just have too many people right now. So just wait, continue to join in, and then we'll, we'll bring you in one at a time here. But first and foremost, uh, I got to ask uh, – well, actually, you know what? We'll hold off, the, the, we'll hold off Michael and uh, Kansas predictions for this game until the end, until after we get through some of these here. But I don't know my go, prediction. Well, I know your prediction, but I don't my know your score friend. prediction. <laughs> I, know you know I know you think he's going to win, but don't know your score. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bring on one of our longtime supporters, in-game 14 Alpha. So first of all, we can bring him in right hey, here. Guys. Yep. In-game, you, in-game, you there? What's up? What's what up, up? What up, man? Appreciate you what joining. Up? Appreciate all the support, man. Uh, what you got for us here, man? Uh, I know I'm probably alone on this, but I seriously think that our chances at winning the ACC are better this year than last year. We have a phenomenal home schedule, and we fixed a lot of our flaws last year. We just couldn't get the offense going, and I'm excited to see what Anai brings to the table. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I think for, for me, that that's really one of the biggest things, which is I think last year we really believed that Beck having a complete offseason with Leary healthy was going to take him to that next level, especially with all the confidence that they ended the season with. Um, but obviously we learned from that first game that there was issues with the offense that we just didn't see before then, you know, because before then we always said, well, you know, it's because, you know, Leary was injured or, well, it was because, you know, COVID or things like that. But last year, not having any of that, it was just glaringly obvious. The issue was just there was a lot of issues with the play calling. Like, it's just plain and simple. There's no reason why we shouldn't have been able to put that game, put the ECU game, first of all, out of reach much sooner than we did. So, a.k.a. the last field goal. So, yeah, I completely agree with you there. So. Um, but but kind of give it to me here in game in terms of this this first game here with UConn. Uh, you know what what's your what's your predictions for this game? Yeah, I just watched the episode where you had uh, Pete Callen and um, I forget the other guy's name, but the guy who works with UConn yep. SSN. I just watched yep. that earlier today, and I think Greg and I were one and the same. I think we had the same score prediction of thirty one to seventeen. I think it's going to be a good competitive game i expect uconn to come out swinging especially after the way that they performed last year um and i think it's definitely going to be an exciting game i think we'll uh still win but it'll be closer than people think maybe two possession victory interesting all right well i mean that's a i mean like here, here's kind of this well you know what i've talked i, I said that i answered i kind of commented on the first thing so so greg my chance how about one of y'all jump in here I I don't know. I don't know what to expect because just on pure talent wise, it's not going to be like last year. It's not going to be 40 points, but it should still be we, – we should still be in control of the game the whole time. And the offense, I don't know. It, it, we may be still figuring it out. Um, Period, but Michelle. I, I mean, <laughs> the defense, like I, I don't see UConn scoring more than 10 points on us, like not, not in garbage time where we put our – third stringers on um yeah so i think it'll be i think it'll be i think we should should win by three possessions i mean i i'll i'll give my score prediction since we're talking about that i mean i'm i said 33 to 10 okay well and let me kind of give my quick kind of metaphor for where i think the uconn program is at kind of comparable to us i think uconn is kind of in that 2014 year portion of the rebuild of their where they finally now have some yeah. guys that can be formidable, can be useful, can be productive, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I think that in terms of that knowing how to win, because, you know, we, we kind of talked about that, how Clemson, like they, they were stacked, you know, in the 2013-2012 eras with Taj Boy, Sammy Watkins, Vic Beasley, even at one point DeAndre Hopkins. 
but yet they couldn't beat, you know, the top tier guys. But it really took until they brought on the guys like DeAndre, I'm sorry, uh, like Deshaun Watson, uh, like Mike Williams, that they mm-hmm. like you saw them really take that next step in terms of knowing how to win, how to be that guy that every single week, no matter who it is, you're not you're not worried about who you're playing. You're just worried about what you're doing. Like it's a mentality thing. And so I, I think for me, that's why I think UConn's kind of a 2014 stage where they're excited, they have some guys, but they're still very early. So for me, honestly, I'm sitting here saying if we're not up by two possessions or more at halftime, I'm a little concerned. I think we should take yeah. this game into yeah. our hands very early and and kind of control uh, from there. So after after hearing all the stuff that Tony Gibson's been hyping up the defense, I definitely don't think they score more than twice against us. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. I think the score will be 35 to 13. I think they'll score once and then it'll be so goals. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I like it. Greg, anything to add here? I mean, I already said my prediction. I said 31 17 just because it's the first game trying to figure things out. Uh, I still think, I mean, I, I think, what is it, 15 now? So that doesn't technically cover. But again, I've always said I don't give a dang about point spreads. I just want a W. So give me yeah. that W, especially on the road to open the season. 100%. Make on. What's going on, brother? Oh, cool. got you not muted, man. All good. Uh, but in game, uh, first of all, man, I mean, appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for you know being a longtime supporter of the channel, uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at some NC State games this year, man. Yep, planning on driving the four hours for I think every game except for VMI. Okay, that's what's that's up. fair. That's, that's yeah. fair enough. Well, the mic working now, guys. Yep. We yeah, got you. it is. There you go. Awesome. You're good. Yeah, I think I got the gist of what we're talking about now. Um. <laughs> I'm pumped. It's game week, and yep. uh, I like McKenzie's score. Um, I think 35 to 13, is pretty good. I'm gonna go um, somewhere like 31, 13. I think probably, probably a good number. Um, get a little bit of everything going in there. So um, I like it. All right, in game. Well, thank you so much, man, for joining us, and we'll we'll talk to you here soon. All right. All right. See ya. Appreciate you. I've always wanted right. to say this. The lines are open, so get on in while you can. That's right. Yeah, no. Uh, it, it's funny. I know, Ken's. Uh, I, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but there was somebody waiting uh, whose name was Manny Bates. So, I mean, I don't know if it was the <gasps> Manny Bates. Manny was here. He was. And then he or someone off. pretending to be. Or someone pretending yeah. to be Manny it's, Bates. Manny's in Greece time, so I think it's like 2 a.m. there. Yeah, probably yeah, not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get Nana on. Oh, we need oh, Nana. Okay. See, Greg says we need you. <laughs> but... <laughs> But I do want to give a quick welcome, though. I know, Kens, we haven't had you on in forever. So and it seems like a lot of our uh, uh, people watching the channel as well are excited to have you back. So welcome. Hey, guys. I've missed you all <laughs> so much. Yeah. Perfect, and- perfect day to come back. I mean, three perfect days. Time. Timing. I, yeah, I see so. what you did there. You waited it out. You were kind of cherry picking. You wanted right. the good episode. Mc- I Mackenzie's it. just the team mascot is what she is. She's the podcast <laughs> mascot. She appears Basically. on football season. I Let surprise you every now and then. She's a myth, <laughs> and then she <laughs> appears. So the legend. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, y'all. Again, so if you want to join in, we don't have a wait right now. So uh, if you want to join in, go ahead and again hit that link, and uh, we'll bring you into the conversation here right now. But uh, with that being said, uh, you know, kind of let's talk a little bit here about thoughts. You know, talking about this season here. Um, you know, real quick, just kind of in general. So, um, you know, well, actually, actually, you know what. Let's take a pause right here, real quick, because we gotta we gotta give uh, you know a heartfelt speech right now to uh, you know all those who are affected right now um, in the UNC family, whether that's the students, uh, the families themselves, the staff, all those affected by the horrible you know uh, things that have mm-hmm. happened today um, around the Chapel Hill area were, were <laughs> awful to hear. So uh, definitely we'll be praying and uh, hoping the best for sure for all those involved. And, uh, you know, just if, if you wouldn't mind, please help joining us and uh, continue to share your thoughts and prayers as well. We'd really appreciate it. So I uh, want to take that, you know, one more serious note here before we get more to the fun stuff. But, yeah, no, rivalry aside, you got to, you know, 100% sure. Yeah, today was not – today there was not a rivalry. 100% agree with you there, Michelle. No UNC rivalry here. Just all human beings here. So, um, yeah, definitely all that, all that there. But, again, y'all, all right, let's get back to it now. Football is finally here, so so let's talk a little bit about. Uh, I'm curious, uh, uh, Greg, uh, your thoughts. I know we talked a little bit about the Notre Dame game versus Navy over the weekend, and uh, 
And so I want to kind of get your thoughts. But then Michael, I know, man, Michael put out some great tweets out there about Mr. Sam Hartman in Notre Dame. So I want to bring him in after. But <laughs> give us your thoughts there, Greg, on, on that Notre Dame game. Any, any, did it make you more worried? Was there like, what was your initial thoughts on it? No, I, I was talking with a coworker and he texted me on, uh, on Saturday, be like, oh, you better watch out for them Notre Dame boys. I'm like, it's Navy. Like, I was in the Navy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. It's not that intimidating if Greg's in the Navy, okay? <laughs> um, you know, it, Notre Dame's got dudes. Like, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I, I think they're going to be a really good potential top 10, top 15 team all year. Uh, I, I told Mike that same coworker today, I'm not worried about Sam Hartman. This is the same Sam Hartman that had six turnovers last year against Louisville. Um, and that was not a defense that's nowhere near NC State's capability. So, uh, yeah, I think we, we'll get after them. Uh, we will be their true first first true test as like probably for us as well, um, depending on how Connecticut goes this week. But, yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, second time only Notre Dame's coming to Raleigh. So um, that should be a, a good time. I love it. So we actually have somebody here waiting here to get into the show, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them in here right now. Uh, Papa, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Nana Let's join go. the chat, y'all. Let's go, Nana. <laughs> Papa's wanting to share, but I can't let him in the limelight. He do not know that much about stages as much as I do. He pulls for them, but he don't get down to the, you know, to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Nana, yeah. what do you think the score is going to be on Thursday? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we're playing Connecticut. I'm going to say it's going to be 30 to 18. Okay. Wow. 18. 18. Yeah. 18 to be so six field goals. <laughs> Good <laughs> yeah. job, Nana. Yeah, there might be a two-point conversion yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. two-point conversion in there. Yeah. That's called that bend but don't break defense right there. So. Yeah. 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 Hey, listen. Yeah, no. uh, if that quarterback works out like they say he's supposed to, it could be even more than that. It could Hopefully. 100%. I like 100%. I, I, I'm not I'm not mad at more than that, so. <laughs> <laughs> so give us give us your your predictions for the season, Nana. So I mean, what's your what's your overall record predictor? Who are we going to upset oh. this year? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What? <laughs> a second. Hang on. What? <laughs> Hang on a minute. This this is me just a second. If you're asking oh, her that, do you want her prediction or what she wants? <laughs> <laughs> what her prediction is. Well, we we, we, we know she's related to Ken, so she's already going 12 and 0. So you know, you know good and well, she's gonna say it's a winning season. So here she is. Yeah. Oh yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take the, the whole ACC tournament this year. That's Period. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, just, have we're tired <laughs> of you know, we're tired of just playing around and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we've worked, we've worked hard. Now Dorian's been there. What now? Ten seasons. It's about time yeah. he gave us a, an ACC championship, yeah. and that's what yeah. we're ready for. I think you and a lot of other fans feel the same way. So. We need to cut this whole interview and put it on Twitter, <laughs> and like the team needs to see this. Like <laughs> this, this, is, this is the ultimate brick wall, right? That's right. <laughs> this is the ultimate motivational speech right here. Look, I think we need to highlight HS's way, comment, uh, Lane, right there. This, <laughs> this, this, this is amazing, amazing woman. woman. <laughs> oh yeah, Nana, you just got called an amazing woman. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. But I'll, I'll, I'll take the ACC championship over Amazing Woman. Oh, okay. oh, there you go. Very oh, modest too. That should, I like a, it. That should be a quote with no context. A yeah, true, a true Southern Belle, right there. Right. Hey, well, thank you for joining, Nana. Oh, thank, thank you, Nana. Y'all, y'all talking that big and all that because I tell you, the the more oomph we give them right now, they're just going to go out there and be a powerhouse. That's, That's, right. Right. That's what I want. It's for us for them to show us on the up. first game what they've got. That's what I want. Mackenzie. Papa, call me after. You're not going to say anything to the one that got her on here? <laughs> That's true. Thank you, Papa. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, <laughs> you see these guys? You You're guys, you see what guy. I am? I'm, I'm in the left of the limelight. All I am is the damn technician. Take <laughs> <laughs> him out. <laughs> Love you, girl. Nah, no. See you, nah, 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 nah. Bye, y'all. <laughs> oh, that's great stuff, oh, right there. Oh my lord! It's always a good time whenever we have Nana on the show. Man. Nana, Nana is must-watch TV. 
Hell, she really is a reality show. Yeah. <laughs> No, y'all, but again, so I do want to kind of talk a little bit about getting the AC championship, y'all, because uh, because I've I've worn my my everyday pound pound the rock shirt today, man, because uh, and I put a tweet out about today about how back in 2013, uh, when they did the intro video, how there was that poem about you know, uh, you know, you hit the rock a hundred times, but on the hundred first ones when it breaks open, it's mm-hmm. not that one that that broke it, it's all that came before it, and yep. uh, because because really for me. I'm still sitting here saying that this has got to be a year where we take where we continue to step forward. If it's an AC championship, great. If it's not, we still just need to see progress. And I, I have season. I'm fine with. Well, it's shoot. If it's, oh my right. god, if we get a ten win season the year after losing Devin Leary, Corey Duran, Tanner <laughs> Engel, Drake yeah. Thomas, Chris Dunn, crazy dude. Dynamite. Like, and with this schedule, because this is by far the toughest schedule we've had in a long time. By far, and oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, and I mean, if you're saying ten wins, there's a good chance ten wins get you in the ACC tournament or ACC. <laughs> Nana, Nana's got me messed I up. Man, <laughs> man, said, man, like, man I, I'm pretty sure he's got a good chance. Too. Pretty yeah. sure. Nana's yeah. mind is on DJ Burns. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, she's not. Uh, and, and, and Michelle adds in here: the road to the AC Championship starts Thursday night. I'm here for it. I, I, I'm ready to buy my tickets. Let's do it. Let's go. Um, but but yeah, y'all, you know, I mean, it, it, for, for me, I, I'm sitting here saying I, I think really just what it all comes down to is just can Brennan Armstrong and the offense be what we expect it to be? Like, honestly, for me, like, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. But if if if, if I'm doing if we win the toss, I want the ball first because I want to go down there and make because, again, and their heads and UConn's heads, what they're thinking about is, well, defense can be great, but if we can get to, get to the offense, then, then we'll be all right. So right. imagine first drive, we go down, score a touchdown, then yeah, oh my God, like, now we have yeah. to face the defense, like like game over. You know what I mean? Like, 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 go ahead, just make it clear. Like, I'm making a statement. I believe in the offense. Go down and, and, and score first thing, and then the game's over. Like, I, I mean, just, just to me, that's going to kick them in, in, in the groin really early. But go ahead, I'm, Ken. I'm ready because, I mean, like a lot of people have said, this is going to be the hardest team in the ACC to prepare for. I genuinely believe. I mean – with Anai coming in, I mean, Brennan and him yeah. were together, but it's like they didn't have all of our offensive weapons. They didn't have the running backs. They didn't have Trent Penix. I think Trent's going to be huge. I think our offense is going to be just as good as our defense this year. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about the schematics of this offense. And see, for me, it's just how quick can it get to come together? You know, yeah. um, and again, if we come out firing on all cylinders, could be watch out ACC. Could be so watch out. Question, and using then. using Armstrong and Morris. I mean, just using them back and forth. I mean, those are two top tier quarterbacks. So I'm excited for that too. So then let's ask this question then, just to keep it balanced. What concerns you the most heading into the season as we're like four days away, three days Our away? Kicker. Kicker. One hundred percent. I don't know about kicker, yeah. but maybe. Yeah, I mean, he's not he's not Chris Dunn, but he's had three years to, of doing it, but at a G five level, so I can kind of kind of get that. Well, and everything you're hearing too, I mean, it's been it's been a, a battle in, in camp between Caleb Smith and uh, Braden Arvison, and uh, so yeah. I mean, and everything if, uh, you've been hearing, it's been tight. So I mean, yeah, I mean, sure, kicker, just because you're interested and, in what you have, but you don't necessarily have concerns. It's just like what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. So go ahead, Michael. Yeah, we've and, been blessed for a couple of years, so I feel like we're back to, I guess, reality. Yeah. And uh, Wolfpack Stats put out a tweet. I don't know if you guys saw it. That most years when our red zone touchdown percentage is higher, our kicking percentage is worse. Because sure, you know, Dorn's been more aggressive because he can't trust the kicker as much. So it's yeah. that's definitely definitely a uh, definitely plays an impact on how you attack the red zone. But I would also kind of go right back at that saying that it was the early years we had Nick Sadie when we obviously didn't have. The offense so so yeah i mean it makes sense that we didn't yeah. have a high touchdown but we had a yeah. high kicker and then we got really really good and when we had you know van bard and uh connor what's his name i forget his name so so not great kickers but then we had struggles on offense but had great kickers so i, I think that's more of just kind of the timing of of those two things together more than necessarily yeah. the strategy behind it but go ahead greg i, I know you want to get in here no um, no, I mean, uh, Endgame's got a good comment here. Um, I don't think he's going to be a scrub kicker, but we no, just haven't no. seen him. And so until that first kick happens and that kicker gets in the groove, you know, um, 
you know, when the lights come on, let's see what happens. And and we know what he did at Iowa State. You know, I mean, like he's an experienced kicker. Like it's not like he's never seen the field before. Like, 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 you know, we know he's a solid kicker. Is he going to be Chris Dunn? Probably not. But that's okay. We don't need him to be Chris Dunn. In ACC environments, I guess. Because, I mean, Iowa State does have some big crowds, but ACC are just like, they try to torment you when you're on the field. So (laughs) I think, I think for me, my biggest concern it's, I think it's to everybody, it's it can offense click. But I think as the offseason has gone on, we're getting closer. You're hearing reports about Yer Mello, who's out for the yeah. season now. You yeah, hear, you big. saw on social media, I don't think it's reported, but I saw, you saw the picture posted on social media of Lyndon Cooper right. in a boot. So you know you're at least down two O linemen. And, um, Coop, Coop should be back by week three, from what I've heard. Yeah, I've Doran, heard said, Doran, Doran said week two in his press conference. Yeah. He yeah. said week they two. Said, yeah. Because I know that they're also, they're being careful with him and Trent. They're yeah. They have Trent they not be. starting because they're watching the clots and everything because they don't want him going full full speed yet. So those yeah. Matter. Well, I would say that just for me, like it's just thinking about where we have where we are at. I mean, like I know we lost Icky two years ago and Zavala was gone this past season on the two, with Austin to the Panthers uh, in the draft. But you know, I'm not I'm not so really sure what the O line depth would be like. Say say we get one guy hurt in UConn, which I think is entirely possible, right? Um, sure. you know, what, where do you go from there? I mean, knock on wood, right. But it's just, uh, I would knock on wood there. So, uh, I just think about that, you know, it's not, I, I don't, I find it hard and kind of, I don't say the word is silly, but as a fan to get just worked up about like injuries that haven't happened yet, because every yeah, exactly. team could be feeling that way. Right. So a million percent. Well, I'm sure every, just like a little more. Because, well, I mean, yeah, we just yeah. we just that's because yeah, all the time. there's this air we have created ourselves as state fans at times. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but, you know, I'm I think that I think the team's going to do well. I just to me, it comes back to the trenches. Right. If we don't have an O-line or a D-line, to be fair about that, then you have nothing. So that it starts right. there, in my opinion. And we'll go from this. So we'll see. But I'm I'm excited about it. I like to, I would like to bet on our offense clicking more than I wouldn't. So. Well, and uh, we'll kind of get to that here in uh, our toughest tweets of the week here. But, uh, you I, know, I, go ahead, Greg. No, I just wanted to share this because I got I, – someone sent this to me, and it's so true. It's a – it's not – it's like a meme. It says, all I really want in life is for my sports team to back up my trash talk. That's all I want. <laughs> That's, Greg, I, that means we will win a natty for me and you. <laughs> so, yeah. If that's so. the case. I love it. That's a good, that's a good quote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sports to live by. <laughs> yeah uh but i like here michelle adding in the comment saying if state wins the toss and elects to receive the ball that will definitely be an indication of a change in the guard for offense mm-hmm. and i mean Absolutely. yeah i mean because yeah i mean like like more than likely if he wins the toss he's gonna elect to, to defer until the second half because that's more that's Most mostly things. the common thing it's conservative uh, he will yeah. that's conservative but definitely man if he's like an offense that would be like Watch out! Like this, that like, this like you lot. know that you know that clip of uh, what's his face, Chris Dime, when he made that oh. kick against Weber, and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, good well, job. That's what Dorby doing. I, I, I was thinking Hasselback in the playoffs against the Packers. We want the ball, and we're gonna score. Like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah there you go. Of, of that one. Yeah, exactly. I remember that meme from Chris. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah. That's what Dave Dorby doing. He should just go ahead and meet leave the game of the season. Do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But if you haven't checked out both of our previews yet um, with uh, Pete Callen and uh, SSN UConn, uh, make sure to go and do that right <laughs> after this. Um, but, you know, really the biggest thing for me coming out of that is, first of all, huge respect for them and, you know, and for, for the UConn program and, the, and what Jim Moore has done. Like we were talking about how he didn't come in and just clean house, how he, you know, he built with the guys that he had to get the buy-in of the players, which I think is huge. Not necessarily maybe for this team, but for the next, but for the following teams, how you're going to have alumni coming back and saying, no, nah, listen, I'll do whatever it takes to support this coach and support this program because they did they did me right, so I'm going to do them right, you know, which I think pays dividends. Um, but also, too, I mean, like looking at this team and everything you're hearing, I mean, nothing nothing about this team concerns me, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, like like the one thing they said is we're deep. And it's like, well, yeah, you're, you're probably deep, but do you have the guy, do you have the horses to compete against our horses? Not, I mean, not not saying like, you know, Look at us here, but I mean, well, let's just be relative, honest. Yeah, you know, it's just relative. Like you know, yeah, it's yeah. great that you have depth, but I mean, let's just real. They don't, they, depth they don't have a Kevin Concepcion coming in as a true freshman, they, right? You know, they right. just don't right now. Now and, they might one day, but not right now. Go ahead. And 
this also, and this is not a a knock on them really, because it, it's what it is. But they're a group of five, not even a group of five. They're independent. They're independent but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, essentially, a group of five. Yeah, same tiers. level. Yeah, so you know that depth is not going to be the same as a P five, obviously. Sure. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, like, I'm sitting here saying we should be able to come out, and if if we're not up by ten or more points at the, at halftime, I'm concerned for sure. I'm, I'm definitely. Just- I hope it's not an opening like it was last year. That's the only – I just don't want that. I don't want to feel like that again. We were up 21-7 at halftime against CCU. We were feeling good in the first half. Well, but it was a great – it was a great point, though, that Greg did bring up talking about how, you know, they were talking on the episode about how they have a chip on their shoulder about how how we blew them out last year. And I'm saying even though we don't have a chip on on our shoulder necessarily against them, we have a chip on shore that we didn't start out the season last year like so we, we really wanted, wanted to. Yeah. We we yeah. started off with a win, but it wasn't uh, the win that we should have, you know, like it shouldn't have been that close. It, it wasn't a 13 in the country win. No, yeah, nowhere yeah. close to that. So, you know, so yeah, I 100% agree there. <laughs> All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and jump on nervous here. Some tweets of the week, y'all. Here we go. First and foremost, man, you got to start here, man. Seeing this graphic pop up on my Twitter uh, account when I woke up this morning. (laughs) And for those listening in, it was the game week uh, uh, graphic that NCAA football puts together. Yeah, Mickey coming in with a hot take uh, (laughs) take lighter, man. Um, It's just so awesome, like, to to think that we are less than three days away, y'all, from from NC State football being back. It's it's crazy. And especially because, again, like last year with every with how, how many pieces we had coming back, there was a lot of like, you know, I've seen these guys play before. Like, so I'm ready to see them again. But this year it's a lot of like seeing Brian Armstrong in a uniform. That's going to be weird. It's you exciting know, seeing, in a different way. Exactly. Like, it's something like, we hey, haven't had. What do these guys have in them that we don't know about? Exactly. And we're going to find out. And so – and then they're like, what's the offense going to look like? That's another thing, too, that, that we're going to see. Now, again, keep in mind once again – that we should see very basic plays, like you know, we shouldn't see anything out, out crazy out of the box this on Thursday. We, sh- you know, ideally, we should be trying to save some of our stuff not. for Notre Dame. Yeah, you're hoping yeah. not. Yeah. Especially not, since Dame, not. <laughs> yeah. Well, sp- especially since Notre Dame is playing Tennessee State. Like I saw, it was I thought it was funny seeing a commercial for they were hyping up Notre Dame versus Tennessee State. You know, you know, Saturday at noon. It's like <laughs> right. Um, Seriously? I right, come on now. Come on. Sorry. So, I said most yeah. publicity Tennessee State's ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Well, let's know. And I want to hear in the chat, y'all, too, who, who's uh, making the trip down to UConn. I know uh, me, and, me and Greg will be there. Uh, I know that's been pretty obvious for sure. So uh, let's know. I, I see Josh right here saying my last day of work for the week is tomorrow. So, okay, there we go. Josh saying he's heading to yep. UConn Wednesday morning. Perfect. At Love least it. three people will be there. No, we got a bunch. At least three. And those well, three will make up like 50. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I do got to say. The noise level. It, I mean, it's I'm pretty be loud. A solid NC State crowd. It's going to be a solid NC State crowd. It's yeah. not It's not going to be like all red, but I mean, you're going to see red in that stadium for sure. Oh, I learned at the baseball tournament. Greg will, if well, there's not a lot of State fans being loud, Greg will hold up that end for us. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. goes without saying. <laughs> I just want to share this. I don't know if you can see it, but I got an alert that says the game is in three days on my uh, countdown. So it's three days uh, away from NC State football opening game. I love so. it. Yeah, we're in theory, I think it's hours. technically less than three days, right? It is actually right. right. It's 30, 31 hours. Yeah. 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 By yeah. this time in, in three days, we'll be just probably past our first quarter up, what, 21 nothing? Is that what we're going with? Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. It's going to be really weird, though, getting used to these new rule changes, though, with the no stoppage after the first down mark. Like, that's gonna be that's that's gonna be a little bit of yeah. adjustment. For yeah, sure. I think I think I saw a tweet that said it was like five less plays. I mean, it's a very small sample size because there were only like six or seven games, but it was like five less plays per game and only like five or six minutes shorter total game time. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's it makes a difference, I guess, but you know, it, it's uh, yeah, I think it's over the course of it's not going to make a difference much on individual games, but over the course of a season that adds up and is I think better for the players because they're not, you know, I mean, over a whole se- season, that's like one whole game less they're playing. Yeah. I was going to say my math's not good. That sounds roughly about 70 plays, which like right. you said is, is, is an entire yeah. game uh, yeah. or at least one team's possessions for in a game. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. 
So it'll be interesting to see. Looking forward to it, though. Uh, so let's move on over to our next tweet uh, week here, which is the depth chart, which uh, is really small. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> but you know, kind of going out of here. So, you know, our starting office line, Anthony Bell and Anthony Carter, Dylan McMahon, Eric Eason, and uh, Tim McKay. I don't think really any shockers there. Um, you know, no. for the most part. I think Anthony Carter is probably the most interesting left guard. It's probably because Lyndon Cooper or Yer yeah, Miller are out. In, injury, yeah. <clears throat> I would also add, I think it's interesting to see who your second team is. So you got Peak. Well, for me, the most interesting is you've got Cayman Smith at second string left yeah, guard. True freshman. True freshman. Sean, yeah. Sean Hill, who's a name people probably are not very familiar with, but he's going to play this year. And, um, you know, I'm, I would say that Matt McCabe is the guy who Doran just put out that yep. he just got the scholarship, which Layton, my brother told me, I think he's a Panther Creek guy. Oh, yeah. really? Cool. Yeah. So, which well, is where um, Mick and I went to school. Hey, at. hey, Greg, Greg, just, just quit it, Greg. Okay. <laughs> catamounts. Uh, but no, yeah, the Catamounts, exactly. The Western that Carolina. Okay. Uh, okay. But no, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool there. Uh, particularly, yeah, for sure. Particularly Cayman Smith, a true freshman offensive lineman there. So, it, yeah. Uh, Last time I think that happened, uh, he wasn't a starter, but last time I think we had a true freshman on the depth chart too deep. Could be wrong. Was it Icky? Was it, I was going to say, maybe Icky his freshman year because he started his sophomore he year. He started. Yeah. yeah. So this might be oh. an interesting progression to watch with Cayman Smith yeah. is all I'm saying. Because he's he's got like, it, right? That says he's 6'5", 315, 316. Right. We got, we yeah, got a lot of beef. Ready. Yeah. He, he, uh, ready. I, know, I know he's a coach's son too, so yep. that's the – it's very coachable, generally speaking. So that's that. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 the other thing which I want to add though is, I mean, it, especially now with Jerry Mello being out for the season, and uh, <laughs> and uh, with uh, Sorry, Cooper dealing with it. <laughs> and with Cooper dealing with injuries, there's no doubt that some of the younger guys, specifically even the freshmen, are going to have to step up. Um, now, you know, do we necessarily need them to step up for UConn, Notre Dame? No, not necessarily, but for the you know second half of the season, it's a long season. Those, that you know that yeah. that yeah, the last yeah. six games, we're probably gonna need them to step up and you know step into situ- situations. Maybe they're not 100 percent ready for it, but you know we need them to say, you know, want some, get some. Let's go, bring it on. So uh, yeah. you know, but again, we'll, we'll take it one at a time and trust uh, uh, Coach Two J and uh, you know just take it one game at a time. Just again, hoping for the best. Turns to injuries, so it's uh, it's the ugly part of football, right? But. Um, the other thing which I got to talk about here, which kind of leads into our next one here, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this depth chart here, but this comment here from Tony Gibson saying, in all my years of coaching in, in this defense, I think this is the best defensive line I have ever had, which is a quote for Tony Gibson. And that's quite a comment. I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't throw that out just every single year saying, no, this is the best defensive yeah, line I've ever had. Yeah. No, this is the best one. Like, I don't think he, I mean, I've, I've never heard him say anything like that before. And I mean, looking at this with Davin Van, Red Hibbler, uh, Noah Potter, transfer from Cincinnati, C.J. Clark, Brandon Cleveland, who's been very impressive in camp, uh, Savion Jackson, Trevally Price, uh, another transfer. You know, there, there's a lot of dudes here that could play. Uh, you and, you and also play have Isaiah Shirley, who's a true freshman on the depth chart as well here. Um, friend of the show. I mean, mm-hmm. he, yeah, friend <laughs> of the show. Uh, you know, he's kind of like second, third line but again i think this goes to speak we talked about it on the offensive side but there's a lot of true freshmen on the depth chart um so just yeah. guys showing up ready to rock and roll yeah well i mean looking at the cornerbacks i mean you got brandon sissy there as a second string cornerback behind aiden white um and uh you know with the, well, the honor yeah At, honor behind too. peyton wilson mm-hmm yep so i mean i mean luckily enough i think linebacker wise i mean you're, you're pretty deep there with uh yeah. Uh, you know, with De- Devon Betty and uh, Jalen Scott, Caden Fordham, Peyton Wilson, but uh, it's interesting though that Jordan Poole is third behind that Kamal is Bonner. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. I, said, I don't know if that says more about Kamal Bonner or it says more about uh, Jordan Poole, right? Because yeah, Jordan Poole's been here for a few years, and he looked pretty good in spurts whenever he kind of get on the field. Uh, I'd like to think that says more about Kamal Bonner. Um, so we'll yeah. see. But uh, just it's just to your point, Lane, that is interesting. Uh, and Brandon, yeah, it's uh, Brandon. Uh, Sis, uh, are we saying that? Sisay? Okay, Sisay. 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 Sisay? Yeah. Okay, yeah, C I S S E. Sisay. It's got a little French on some mustard yeah, on there. Yeah, there you go. A little mustard. I like that. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, and then we were kind of talking to you special teams wise, uh, you know, making yeah. you were talking about beforehand how it's interesting how Jalen Coit uh, is the, the 
one and the not one a but one guy for a punt return and then mm-hmm. kickoff return is julian gray so kind of yeah. give us your thoughts there on Jalen being the one i mean Jalen's one of the fastest guys on the team uh, Jalen coy is a guy who has not played a ton um i think he's maybe had like one touchdown so far in his career if that um yeah but he's a guy that sporadically you'll hear doran drop your name drop Jalen coy as a guy who's when he's asked, like, hey, guys who are standing out and different in the receiver departments, Jalen Coyt's a name that pops up when you've had, a, like, a, a sea of talent that you didn't know who would pop up. So I'm going to be curious to see what he has there. To me, that tells you, obviously, that the team trusts him at that position, yeah. that he's got sure you. sure hands, right? Because when I turn, everybody's coming at you. So he's he might, he, he probably got really, really good hands there. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see what Coit does, and I'm curious to see on the depth chart um, anywhere else. He's a wide receiver, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's second yeah, behind, string. Yeah. Second string behind Kevin Conception, which is yeah. another interesting thing that he's just mm-hmm. listed as a starting uh, slot receiver. For, no or there either. No or there either for Con- Conception, right. right? So that's mm-hmm. a fresh, true freshman that friend, fans are going to really get involved with. I think also notable if you look at the flexi, the flex, the flex, the flex, whatever flex. that means. Yeah. You do have an or there. I know Rooks is starting, but you have an or there with Vereen, who yeah. we put as a tight end, and is that like a pseudo tight end receiver role? Probably. Yeah, I think it's like flex Y. I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. Because you don't even see him at like tight end. You don't, see, you don't even yeah. see him listen to the, depth, the, uh, the tight end depth chart, sure. right? Yeah. He's just yeah. it's Tootle, Penix, and Sebro. So they view they view Vereen as something different. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely you know, more as a receiver, probably. Were you guys surprised Rosner was not starting? Not really. I, the, I think the way I think some go casual vertical, fans would be right. I think casual fans. Yeah, would be but I think the way they're going to go vertical so much this year, you're going to see a lot of rotation in and out. I, 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 I think because here's the other thing that we really haven't talked about with the with the Robert and I offense. They, if things are clicking, they like to run about two to two and a half to three plays per minute, and so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so if you're doing that, you're going to need to get guys in and out. And, you know, if you're running long routes, you guys are going to get winded. Um, so there's going to be plenty of opportunity for these wide outs. Again, let's be real. I think, honestly, the offense side, primarily the tight end and the receivers, it's just a circus. It's, it's just a, it's mm-hmm. just, window it's just dressing. a dance. It's just window dressing. Yeah. Like, I like, mean, they listed it, it, 12 people on offense. <laughs> so. Right. We're yeah, like all of them at once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. So I mean, like you know, like even though even though Keon the is in front of Bradley Rosner, do we actually think Keon the is going to play ninety percent and Rosner play ten percent? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty 60, 40, 50, 50. Like it's going to be pretty close. Right. Like so Ro- I got Rosner's, Rosner's not the same as Keon the Let's right. be real. And not by the way, this is game one. The things can change based on yeah. the production very and, quickly. You know that. You know, you'll figure out real quick who you can who who you can rely on when the when the game gets going. Because so I got a few few other notes to go along with this. So uh, I'm going to kind of go down the list of what my my thoughts were on this. Um, do you think it's interesting that Tootle is listed ahead of Penix, even though it's an or? Do you think it's interesting because I know people thought, hey, Penix could really shine with versatility here. But I, I guess it goes back to what McKenzie was saying, and like we all know, is like Take you it know, easy. P- Penix has been kind of you know trying to get back. Full, the full strength. So again, yeah. week one, it makes sense. If Penix comes back strong, ready to go next week or week after, I, I would imagine him taking back over his number one spot on the depth chart. I had a there was another account somewhere on NC State on social media, Twitter that had asked a question that give us your hot takes. I think and my one of mine was uh, potentially that Tootle leads State in touchdown receptions. Yeah, and I don't think it's that hot. I, I mean, I think it. I mean, I think you look at the receivers and all that, but. People are saying, hey, they're not so high on the receivers. I think Tootle is getting way overlooked, personally. That's just my opinion. Um, But that won't be there. I'm going to go down the running back position. Do you think it's interesting that Houston and Allen, there's no or there? It's clearly Houston. It's very interesting. I was surprised. I mean, I thought Allen looked really good. I mean, Houston's looked good, but I I thought it would have maybe at least an or there, and it's not. So does that say more about Houston or Allen, you guys think? I, again, I think it's the offense. I think it's maybe up. a little bit of two of, of, of Dorn and the guys really trying to put faith in Jordan Houston, saying, you're our senior guy. You're the guy that's been with us for five years now. 
you know, you've played a lot of football with us. So like, you know, we want you to be the guy if you can be the guy. Cause that's another thing that I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I can't remember who I was reading, but there was an article talking about, can we have that workhorse guy this year, that guy that can get a thousand yards rushing, you know, like Reggie Gillespie, Matt days, Naeem Hines. Right. And I, I think it, unless an injury happens, if it's going to be anybody, I think it's going to be the Jordan Houston because I think as long as Jordan Houston's healthy, he's going to be very involved in this offense because yeah. of the seniority, because of how much football he's had, because of the versatility. Yeah, he is a very strong guy. He can hit right down, right in, right in between your teeth, or he can beat you on the outside. Like He's yeah. very versatile. So that's my two cents on and it. And you've already mentioned about Brandon Sisse, and, um, which, by the way, I know someone answered it. They said it's a Sissy. I had, if you go back and watch that interview when, he, when we were recruiting him before he came on campus, I did the same thing. I said Sissy, and he corrected me. So, um, gotcha. But – I will say um, with with the nickel position, Robert Kennedy, we have some transfers on this team. We have some transfers on this team that people aren't necessarily familiar with, but I think there's only one on this team besides Brennan Armstrong that is starting, and that's Robert Kennedy. I don't see another one just quickly scanning. So Yeah, that's um, a starter, no. Besides, besides, and, and Narvison, the kicker, oh, right? Yeah, so, kicker. Um, I think people are going to need to get to know Kennedy because he was a big time statistical player at o- o- Old Dominion, mm-hmm. and him immediately coming in and taking that starting nickel spot is a good sign, I think, for what he can do. Well, and the fact that the third name on the nickel list is Cecil Powell. I mean, him, I mean Cecil Powell. Is, <laughs> I mean, I, he probably forgot he's even on the team. Yeah, he's solid. He's been man. the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. No. So yeah, he's so, only like, listed as a Richard sophomore. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, like that. And then the safety spots between Devin Boykin, Bishop Fitzgerald, Rick, uh, Rakeem Ashford, Jakeen Harris, and Sean Brown. Like, I love all five of those names. Yeah. And you no got issues. Fitzgerald. He's a, he's a uh, transfer as well. Transfer, yeah. 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 The number one uh, transfer, Juco. number one safety transfer, Juco safety transfer. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I'm telling you, like, like if I'm looking at it, the only real issues, only real concerns I have is the, depth at cornerback um and that's just more just because there's names on there we haven't seen like again the the Terenti hinton and uh brandon sisse um and then the offensive line depth but other than that i'm yeah. i'm happy i'm happy so feeling good now i gotta jump on this comment here uh from rusty oral saying wolfpack nation does need to look past uconn take care of business before worrying about the irish they're going to so first and foremost, again, I mean, the season hasn't have started yet. So, you know, of course, a lot of fans are going to think about the whole season in general right now because we don't know anything right now besides what we just have heard. But we haven't seen anything yet. So, you know, it's easy to say, you know, talk about the season. It's, but, I mean, at the end, they, the only people that matters that, that don't look past UConn are the people in the locker room. That's really the only people that, that really matters if they look past UConn or not. And we know for sure with how, again, how they started last season, the goals and aspirations they have, and also to the opponent that they have to face in game two, they know they need to come out strong against UConn. There's no doubt about it. And, and, and if they are, if we're seeing a whole different thing, and if we're seeing us struggle against UConn, then we're going to need to raise questions. But if we are the program that we should be right now and that we have seen, then we should be able to take care of business and, and be ready for, and move on and be ready for Notre Dame. So my two cents there. Well, to your point there, I think for the for everybody watching, go check out the preview we did with the UConn um, writers. Um, they know a lot about that program, and I think they gave some good insight there. So I won't spoil it, but um, mm-hmm. I thought Layton Gray did a good job with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I like the uh, Rusty's question here. I like this question. Thoughts on Friday night games. Will the Carter be full for this new experience on 929 against Louisville, correct? I think that's who it is. 929. 929 is Louisville, 100 yeah, yeah, we have back-to-back Fridays. Yeah. Virginia on the road and then Louisville. At home. I mean, I think a night game there in Carter Finley, I mean, those are special. Night games in Carter Finley are special. So I mean, yep. and especially Louisville. Having like, turned over half their team right now. So yeah. Yeah. But, I mean <laughs> like 45 dudes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the fact that like like if like even if it was even if it was VMI that we were playing on a Friday night. I still would say there's going to be a really good crowd for it, but especially the fact that we're playing Louisville, an AC opponent, on a Friday night in a night game. Yeah, no, it's going to be. I think one of the younger, the young for the younger fans, one of their best 
college memories is seeing State beat Lamar Jackson's Louisville team at night. So I think they have that memory, and they're going to be like, I'm going to that game. So, 100%. Agreed. Um, what you smirking right. at, Greg? <laughs> mm-hmm. What you yeah. smirking at? <laughs> no. It's... So, oh, yeah. uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, bring in somebody here waiting uh, to come in right here. We got Sterling that we'll bring in right now. Uh, see, it looked like their their feed was giving away, but yeah, we'll come back to him uh, yeah. here in a second. Look like that's it my son. Like oh, Sterling, that's your son. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. He was frozen. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, okay. We'll see well, if can, oh, we'll see if whenever we see yeah. when we see some movement, we'll see if he comes back in. But yeah. Um, so uh, and also, too, okay, Michelle brings in a great point as well, saying it is parents of family weekend and tickets yeah. sold out for the game in minutes. Yeah, and that's yeah, another thing as well is that is that we are very very close, and it's very very likely we might sell out of all of our home game tickets before the Notre Dame game for the entire season. That's that's not like as far as I know, like and again, I'm I'm only 29 years old, so I haven't been around forever, but I've never seen that happen for us to sell out all of our tickets for all of our home games for the whole season before the first home game. That's crazy. Yeah. So and again, I ask you once again, like how much more can you really ask for in a program? Like there's no doubt the excitement is through the roof for NC State football right now. It is through the roof. Simple as that. I got that's all the that's all the 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 proof you need right there. Um. So and then Cam. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, you, sorry, you, sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, Cam bringing in uh, since it's on the road. I hope you don't come out flat. How many times over the years have we since is where we were playing behind the whole game? Let's go out and take control early. Hundred percent. I don't think I'm that saying. happens though. Sorry, I mean to cut you off, Clayton. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Please. I, I don't I'll think talk. that happens. I mean, you saw at ECU State did not come out flat. It's game one. If you come out flat game one, something's you got a problem, right? Yeah. So I don't yeah. care where you are. I don't care if you're playing in. Uh, wherever it is, like you, you gotta, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. Yeah. We had a little, we had a little bad luck in that second half. That's what obviously made it but, closer. But energy is not going to be the problem, right? No. Uh, yeah. No. Nerves will be the problem, maybe. Right. Just getting like it's the opening game, and I gotta just get settled in for you know a few plays, and I'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, and and again, but but with how much senior leadership there is on this team. I, I, I again, it, it's just a matter of that. If we are where we where we should be as a program, we shouldn't be nervous in that game. We should be confident knowing that. I mean, right. we got this. We I'm got this thing in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's UConn. Let's go. Let's beat them in their own house. Sounds good to me. So, uh, where 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 you bringing in? Uh, I guess we can bring in Sterling here and see if Thanks. he's there. Sterling, you got us. Oh, oh, oh dang it. Only on, two, two strikes. Two yeah. strikes. <laughs> only, <laughs> only if he had a dad that was technically sound. Yeah. <laughs> Sterling, you there? All right, he's Sterling. out. He All tried. Right. All right, we he tried. tried. All it's right. Okay. Well, just nah, like his. I love you, dad. Dude. I'm assuming twelve and zero. So I love it. Yeah. Just All right. Twelve and zero. All, all he did was he called me on Saturday and says, "Where's my football shirt?" So uh, that's all he cares about. He needs some new gear. So I love it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's move on to our next tweet of the week here, um, highlighting uh, Savion Jackson, who got announced as a comeback of the year, player of the year award watch list. And then uh, Brandon Armstrong got names to the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award watch list. Uh, again, expecting huge years from both of these guys. I think Savion has been waiting to have a big year. He has the talent for it. He has the experience for it. And I think this is the year where it finally happens. And then for Brandon Armstrong, he's a guy that people doubt saying, oh, well, last year is a real Brandon Armstrong. And But he was a guy that you know before last season was a borderline first, first round, second round draft pick. And he has the talent and he wants to get back to that level. And this is one shot to do. He's back with mm-hmm. Robert and I. Let's make, let's make it happen. So yep. anything to add on this, on this, guys? Him throwing lefty. It's always going to look so weird. That's going to take oh, yeah. some time getting used to. Yeah, well, cause, the, go ahead. Well, I was, oh, no, the only thing I was going to say was because uh, 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 the before Leary uh, or the guy that replaced Leary uh, like for 2020 for the COVID year. Brock. Bailey Hawkman. Bailey Hawkman. Bailey, Bailey, he was, he was, he was lefty. He was lefty? He was? He was? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He oh, was lefty. I did not remember that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I had a question. So they've got all these fancy names for a lot of these words, but comeback player of the year is just comeback player of the year award. There's not I a guess. famous one, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh come on, maybe <laughs> it'll be, be somewhere. <laughs> the Savion Jackson comeback player of the year award. Yeah. There you oh, go. I like it. I like it. There we go. 
I mean, some think about, some think about, right? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and move on here to our next one here. Got to give a huge shout out here yeah. to another member of the uh, Pac-13 uh, Pac Pros heading to uh, heading to the show, and Evan Justice, former NC State closer for the Pac-13 team, uh, heading to uh, uh, heading to the Colorado Rockies. Uh, played uh, yesterday, two days Saturday ago? night. Saturday, Saturday night. night. Yep. And uh, had what two strikeouts, right? If two I'm, strikeouts and correctly. a ground ball. He did give up one run. Um, his okay. ERA is nine, just because he has <laughs> one inning of pitch. But uh, you know, for his first game out against one of the better teams in the in, in all of MLB, he he, he held his own. Was so. the Orioles? The it Orioles? was the Orioles. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. funny to say. One, well, of one of the better teams. teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, the Orioles. Yeah, yeah, they're they're number one in the AL. So, but um, That's true. Yeah, he did. I mean, he he did nice. Uh, obviously, he'll probably stick with the rest of the season unless something crazy happens. It's kind of one of those September call ups, uh, especially where they expand the rosters. But he got a couple days in before that. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he pitches at Coors, though, because we all know that that place is a a, yeah. a horror show for pitchers. So, right and. And and not that I'm necessarily a fan. I mean, because I'm not a huge baseball follower, but I'll tell you, I'm sure a lot of our followers here are fans of this team. But Greg, the Braves are looking kind of good, man. I'm just saying, dude. they're looking <laughs> Still pretty got good. Got a postseason. You got to win in postseason. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> they're looking, they're looking pretty good. Yeah, no, nope. we'll see what happens there. Remember but, all those Braves. Uh, did you teams say Rays or Braves? <laughs> he, said, Braves. he said Braves, but Braves. Oh, remember all those great Braves yeah. teams that went to the World Series and they only won one. So. Well, that's true. true. But hey, the one one recently, so yeah. we'll see if they can make it too. But I, I, I knew I, I felt I felt Kansas presence calling yeah. me to bring that yeah. up. Yeah, so. yeah, you definitely had to do that. Thanks. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and then let's bring up uh, uh, our last big uh, piece of big news here, which is uh, Davin Van, uh, NC State defensive end, getting the honor of wearing the number one jersey this Very season. Cool. Uh, per Dave Doran's quote saying, Davin has earned this honor. He has one speed, is a dominant player, and serves others off the field. And again, I mean, I said it today that he was one of our uh, uh, tour guides around the Murphy Center when we mm-hmm. did the the Savage Wolf Murphy Center tour with it was him, Lex Thomas, and Peyton Wilson. And I mean, just an absolute superb guy. What a great guy, you know, a, a fun guy, very down to earth, you know talks to everybody. I mean, very respectful. Can't say enough about him. And then, you know, just like Doran was saying, I mean, you know, he's, he's kind of like a, you know, he's, he's a soft teddy bear off the field, but once he's on the field, man, he's, 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 I mean, he's, he's has one speed, which is just, just kicking the teeth in of whoever he's facing against. So, you know, that, that, which I love it. So a uh, huge honor there to get that number one Jersey. Anything to add yeah. here, y'all? Yeah. So a uh, meet the pack day, uh, you could just see the way he interacted with everyone, treated everyone the same. Uh, so I, I have no doubt that he's probably one of the best guys that could be, uh, given this, um, it's not an award, but this, uh, recognition, honor, honor, and honor, yep. honor. That's a really good word. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I thought he was really cool. He talked to me for about three or four minutes. You know, it just, he treated everyone as if they've been lifelong friends of his. So, I'm really excited to see what he what he what he brings um, wearing that number one jersey. And by the way, this is the first time we've had a new number one in a while, right? Uh, uh, you know, with Isaiah because Moore Isaiah Moore, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. So he had it multiple years. Um, so it's exciting to see someone uh, get recognized for this. Who was number one before Isaiah? Do you remember? Was it James Jaylen? Williams? Or, oh, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. And then Jalen before that, I think. And then uh, I think that Jaylen was the Samuels, first year they did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, James Samuels, yeah, 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 and then yeah. James Williams, yep, yep, yeah, hmm. yeah. So, something about now. Uh, let's Mostly go ahead. Defense. That's true. Yeah, I mean, not, not. I don't think that's necessarily by design, no. but it just works no. out that way. So, yeah. Um. So, got to give a shout out here to some pack pros here, which hopefully should be getting some great so news here within the next few right days. Here. Uh. So, just kind of go over for those who are listening uh, to this uh, show. This uh, is a tweet talking about. Dre Thomas, linebacker for the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, undrafted free agent, and some of his stats. And I won't necessarily read all of these, but he had 89 snaps, had 23 tackles, five tackles for loss, which is first among rookie linebackers, all rookie linebackers, drafted first round or undrafted. Uh, had tw- 29 yards allowed, which is seventh lowest among rookie linebackers. Uh, had four special teams tackles as well. So he's a guy that was effective not only on defense, but on special teams as well, which with guys like this that are undrafted free agents, you have to be effective 
on your side of the ball and special teams. Yeah. Usually you're you're not going to be just one. You have to be both. You know, you have to be yeah. you have to be a versatile guy in order just to make a 53 man roster. So he's been outrageously impressive. And if for some reason the Raiders decide to let this guy go, which he's which, or put him on the practice practice roster, somebody's going to pick him up. Somebody yeah. needs some some linebacker depth in the NFL. Got to. And you got to look at this guy. He basically averaged a tackle every four snaps. Just yeah. think about that. I mean, that's incredible production. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, I mean, I'm he's not, going I'm, to get the roster spot. He's going yeah, to be yeah, too he's good. Going to. He's going to just because of pure production. First among rookie linebackers. First, I mean, like, and how many categories? Three. Yeah, he's yeah. top. He's top. He's he's he is the one of the best two linebackers across four statistical categories. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to look at yeah. who are some of the better linebackers drafted uh, in this class. Was Jalen Carter a defensive line or linebacker? He's, he's, he's line. line. Yeah, he's he's oh. the huge defensive lineman from Georgia. But <laughs> I'm sure there like, were we'll, a couple we'll of Georgia back, linebackers. I'm just going to yeah. go back and look just for the yeah, sake we'll, of uh, – you guys are like, talking, but I'm going to look it up. Well, Here's I, the other – go ahead, go ahead, Greg. No, I was just going to say the one thing oh. that makes him – um, really attractive is those four special teams tackles. When when you're looking to fill out the bottom of your roster, you need guys that can play both special teams and uh, regular snaps. So that that gives him an inside edge uh, onto making the team. I got you right here. I got two two drafted in the top ten. Will Anderson from Alabama, Hello. third overall. Tyree Wilson, Texas Tech, seventh overall. But the yeah, only I, question I, is, did they play in the preseason? It, well, yeah, I, would I would imagine. So. I would imagine being <laughs> yeah. rookies. I mean, rookies uh, they may have played play. limited snaps. It probably is a good quote point. But you got uh, Nolan Smith from Georgia, first round. Mm-hmm. You got another guy, a linebacker from Iowa, Jack Campbell to Detroit. Mm, um, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm just kind of go through some other. If there's any other more notable names here, <laughs> Trent Simpson, Clemson, uh, in yeah. the third round. Uh, yeah. So just, just he's playing better than some of those. At guys. least one of them, if not more of them. Right. So, I mean, and, and four different statistical categories. Right. So, I mean, that's, he's going to be a roster. He, it, I, heard, I saw someone say he's too good for the Raiders not to offer because if he, if they just let him walk, he, they, they know that this guy's going to another team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he, they're going to offer him. He's going to get a deal. Yeah. Yeah. One well, again, because rookie deals are so cheap these days. Go ahead. Greg. Well, especially, I was, a, yeah, especially with undrafted ones, they're making <laughs> league minimum ish. Yeah. Uh, basically. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing I was going to say, the only, and we already know this, but the only reason he didn't get drafted was because of his size. I mean, let's yeah. let's be let's be real. If he if he's three to four inches taller, ten pounds heavier, he's probably getting drafted in the top three rounds based off of his stats. And yeah. and all he all all he's done since he was at state was just produce. I mean, he came in his freshman year and was an instant producer, um, getting like four or five starts that year. Um, yeah, just give the guy a chance. That's all. That's all he needed, um, and he's going to do his 100%. thing. I mean, yeah. and to be fair, like you said, if he, he gets a league minimum, that's seven hundred and fifty grand. Yeah. <laughs> so he's gonna be living just fine yeah. If, yeah. if he gets yeah. that. So when he gets that. Yeah. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and talk about one more big topic here before we wrap this thing up. And it is just an annoyance to say the least. Sources per Pete Hamill, after a weekend of conversations, there's continued momentum towards the ACC adding Stanford, Cal, and SMU. AC officials are working on gathering the president slash chancellors on a call, which is expected to take place at some point early this week. And apparently it was supposed to happen today, but because of everything that happened to UNC, they delayed it. Yeah. But again, just, just, uh, it makes zero sense. Like I know Justin, you're a huge fan of it. Yes. Because yes, I do understand what you're probably saying with the fact that Stanford, Cal and SMU are literally saying I, we will take a pay cut. Mm-hmm. Just to make, just to be part of the ACC, but it's that's just desperation. The money, that's just desperation again, and and you're looking at the short term money, but for the sake of every student athlete across every sport, aka outside of football, this is a lose, lose, lose. There's nothing good about adding those three for anything besides football. Simple as yeah, that. I want to find the tweet from Brett McMurphy that I shared in our. Um, discord which if you guys aren't on the discord you should totally join that because it's got some good info that we share not just once a week but every day um brett mcmurphy one reason acc considering stanford cal and smu is espn's media rights deal with acc allows espn to renegotiate i.e reduce revenue if league drops below 15 members 
Sources right. told whoever. With potential future departures of FS, Florida State, Clemson, and possibly others, i.e. State, Carolina, you know, um, ACC considering Power 5 schools now as opposed to G5 schools later to maintain right. required membership number, which the one con I said, but SMU is a G5 team. So mm-hmm. I don't understand that. Why we're even including yeah. considering them right now. Well, I mean, they got, they got P5 money. So. Yes, yes. And, and, and they have the Dallas market. Right, right. They 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 have a, they true. have enough to become a, a P5 school. And yeah. so I, the other rumor I heard was that it it will be it would be Clemson or Florida State who changed their vote, not NC State or UNC. Correct. I heard that because, because they have less draw. N- well, no, because, because they're going to be more multi. money. More they're going to leave. They're going to leave anyways. And Correct. the more and the money that Stanford, Cal, and SMU will bring in is going to be that incentive base. So those right. two are going to be good. Right. I think they're going to be good. So they think they're going to get more money out of it too and then just leave anyways. Yep. Mm-hmm. I thought I saw somewhere where they said that for the Big Ten, the SEC, when it comes to priority, priority is Notre Dame, number one. Priority number two would be North Carolina schools. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then three Virginia. would be Florida State. Well, Virginia or, was in there. Whatever North Carolina Virginia schools, then three would be yeah. Florida State and Clemson, which is I find that hard to believe. Well, just it's, because it's bonkers the, because Notre Dame's grant of rights comes back to the ACC if they yeah. decide to join a conference. So it, that doesn't even that doesn't even make sense. It's, they can't they can't legally jump to the Big Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, the Big Ten wants them more, but sure. it doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. Now, it, well, and I think the only thing that makes sense maybe with, well, but again, because the SEC, like you can add the North Carolina market because you don't have somebody currently in North Carolina yeah, market, but you have why. South Carolina yeah. and South Carolina. So, I mean, it's not necessarily a hop, skip, and a jump. But uh, again, y'all, I, I'm just sitting here saying I hate these talks. I really do. And, and if it really does happen, the state for Cal and SMU join. I don't it's know. Like, all right. Like, welcome, welcome. Whatever. I, I, I just happy, say we happy. boycott the talks because we got football starting in 71 hours. Yeah. yeah. Boy, it, but it's just crazy that literally like, like, cause we know that the vote was one vote away from mm-hmm. it going. Mm-hmm. And per the talks, there is enough movement for them to have another call again. So, mm-hmm. so like if it was just like, you know, like more, more of the same, which is, which is I'm hearing that Duke, Boston College and Miami are going to the SEC this week. They're going to leave this week. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. But this is literally like, yeah. you know, something which probably actually could happen this week, which would be a huge damper to say the least. So, right. yeah, no. Everybody except for Justin Cook apparently is is, is in agreement. This would not be a good move. Even Joe Ovies and Jillio, who I mean, follow this emphatically, are completely against this move if it were to happen. So, um, but anyway, y'all. So let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, you know, and just kind of get back onto onto you know wrapping stuff, talking about this upcoming game here on August thirty first, seven thirty p.m. in Storage, Connecticut, here in State versus UConn. Uh, what channels are going to be on? I don't know this because I'm CBS. Just not gonna... CBS, CBS Sports CBS Network. Sports Network. That's so right. It's harder to get. I'm going to have to do a free trial. Here's, here's a real question: Is it on YouTube TV? <laughs> I think it is. I, don't I think, know. I think don't you don't it. you tell me I can't watch this game, guys. Don't you tell me I can't watch this game. I'm gonna don't have to do like a, a free trial, like Fubo or whatever, one of those random <laughs> streaming. Because I think yeah. I've already I've already had YouTube TV, so yeah, it's not on cable. Mm, well, just go ahead and do that. Re- just everybody, go ahead and do that research now to make sure that yes. you have access yeah, to yeah. it. Don't don't wait until the when you're turning it on. It says the it does get out. it. Yeah, it does get it. Does. it. Yeah. yeah, I just looked that up for you. So if you have YouTube TV, yeah. Good. Yeah. Maybe yeah, Hulu, you, go, maybe it's on Hulu TV. Maybe Hulu maybe. Live or whatever Google it's called. It. <laughs> yeah. So what was your what was your what was your question making? Uh I don't remember my oh. question was. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. All right. So, so to kind of give it to to kind of wrap this thing up to, before we officially start the season. So this, this since this is the last live show until the season officially is underway. Give it to me in terms of who is your one breakout player for this season. And Michael, since you're here, I'm gonna let you go first. Side note: Hulu TV does get CBS. I was just typing in our chat. Yep. (laughs) Okay. Cool. Um. So they're they're great. (laughs) Breakout player. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to go Julian Gray. I just, I, I think he's, Good choice. I don't know if he'll be the most productive of the like receivers and skilled players, but I think if you're talking breakout, I think he fits that mold and, and yeah, Julian Gray. All right, cool. Make it what you got. Man, I got. I was going to go back to look and confirm the depth chart, but if I'm not mistaken. I think uh, Julian Gray does have an or on his name for for the depth chart. Does he or does he not? He does with yeah does. With Timmons. Yeah, twelve Timmons. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, and let us know go, in the chat, y'all. Let, let us know. Yeah, in chat. I'm gonna go with conception. Coming. Besides, besides uh, Brent Armstrong, right? He is a true yeah, freshman right. with no or on his name. Yeah. And he's in that good. inside slot. I really think it's going to be him. Um, if I have to go defense, I'm actually going to go Robert Kennedy. I'm going to pick him there yeah. at defense because um, nobody knows who he is. So, uh, but I, I think on offense, I think overall it's conception. You know, minus Brendan Armstrong. So, sure, Greg, what you got? Yeah, I think the obvious choice is conception, but I, I'm going to go Porter Rooks. Just kind of mix it up a little sure. bit. I think uh, you know it's his time to shine. He's been in the program for a while. Um, I think he's got potential to to really break out in this offense. So let's go, uh, Porter Rooks. Can I ask, right. ask this question? What do you think about like a like a guy like an offensive line considering a breakout player like an Anthony Belton? Yeah, boy, absolutely. But that I mean, it's not what you would think as a yeah, great breakout yeah. player. But has he played much? I don't think. He's yeah, he it. he started last year. Started last year. Okay, he was supposed to start, that. yeah, but then he got pulled for, he did, for a couple he, he games. He did get pulled at the end of the season. I forgot season, about but, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not changing my vote. I was just curious. So, Yeah. So so here before I give mine in-game says KC. Uh, Nick says, I think Michael Allen's in for a great season. I totally agree. It's, it's yeah, on the table one. for sure. Wait, let me uh, ask you so you feel like you get asked the question. You're just going to save it. Who is okay. your breakout player, Layton? Mm, good question. <laughs> it's a really good question. You know, this is a good question. I wasn't prepared for that. You know, I got to think about it. <laughs> um, no. So I'm going to go a little bit out of the box here. It's a guy which, if you've kind of noted enough how many times I've mentioned this guy's name, you wouldn't be surprised about it because I've mentioned his name a couple of different times, uh, even in today's show, actually. Um, it's somebody that even when I read all of the breakout, they first of all, they don't really talk about defense much. They talk about, like, you know, Bradley yeah. Rosner, Julian Gray, Kevin Conception, Porter Rooks. Turn Penix, you name it. But I'm going to go Noah Potter. I like Noah Potter a lot. I think, dude, that dude is built like a beast, man. He is huge. He's got a huge frame. He, he comes from a very uh, – Macon, bro. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Uh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> I muted him. Uh, you're good. No. Um, and uh, he's a guy that comes from a very successful football program in Cincinnati, uh, you know, and I think he's a guy that, I mean, besides the main three of C.J. Clark, Savion Jackson, um, you know, and those guys that – He's a guy that's not really talked about, but he's a guy I think that really will make a big impact. And he will be, besides Brian Armstrong, the biggest impact transfer for this season, in my opinion. So that's going to be mine. A little bit out of the box. So, but just wanted to kind of go there since, uh, um, you know, make it kind of mentioned, uh, you know, the the defensive backs. I wanted to mention the defensive linemen. So, um, but anyway, y'all, so that wraps it up here for us, y'all. Again, once again, hashtag beat UConn all day long. Let's get it done. Be wanting to know. Let's talk about Notre Dame on Monday and get excited for it. First game in Carter Finley Stadium with the new scoreboard, the new sound system. Let's get hyped for it and be feeling good after a huge butt whooping over UConn, baby. Uh, so yeah, Nick saying it right here, saying this is gonna be a great year. Could not agree more. And Hunter with a good pack as always, y'all. So for us, a couple of quick announcements here. So again, uh, we already have both of the preview episodes out for UConn. So make sure to go and check those out here right after this live stream uh for us uh you know i i have a goal i would love to hit 8500 subscribers here by uh by the end of september if possible that's that's a huge stretch here but i would love to push that push that goal um so if you wouldn't mind if you haven't already hit that free subscribe button hit that free notification bell so you're notified on all your devices whenever we go live with any new nc state content and uh, we have a bunch of exciting new stuff because also too i mean again we do it all. Like we we're, we don't just come on here every day and just talk. Um, we don't just do live streams and episodes. We do all kinds of different stuff. Whether it's you know we did the simulation thing on Saturday, which you know I, if you haven't checked that already, it's 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 a fun thing to check out. Um, you know we do the things that state fans never say. We do 
the trivia uh you know we do we do all kinds of different content here which is you know you know we just try and come up with different fun content to do so again hitting that subscribe button you're going to see a lot of great stuff that's not just talking it might be a whole bunch of different things that you may not have seen before so make sure again it's well worth the investment to hit that free subscribe button notification bell if you enjoyed this uh live stream if you're excited for the season hit that like button and also to y'all give us a uh, a follow if you haven't already on Twitter, Instagram, and, and TikTok at Tuffy Talk Now. And uh, we look forward to seeing y'all soon. And uh, if you're going to be at UConn, make sure to come find us. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be out and, and around. This now, so find us. three days away. Less we than three days, days maybe. away. I mean, we have plenty of stickers to give away. Right now, this time, yeah. three days from now, it'll be pretty much halftime. I know. Pretty it's crazy much. to think about. Mm hmm. All righty, y'all. Well, thank you all so much, much. for joining again. It has been a pleasure. It's been a blast. We'll see y'all soon. And go pack, y'all. Beat UConn, baby. Beat UConn.